Being a low income investor or someone that feels like they can't contribute as much on a monthly or weekly basis shouldn't stop you from starting or continuing to build wealth and passive income. And as someone who has invested 25 to $30 every single week for the past five years, here's what I would do if I had to go back in time and start all over as a low income investor. I started to get more serious into dividend investing when I was 26 years old and around that time I had just graduated from college and I was actually a few months away from starting my own YouTube channel. And at the time only working part time, I was only able to invest up to $25 a week into anything. And without really knowing what I was doing, what I was researching, anything like that, I mostly relied on what other YouTubers said, unfortunately without doing any extra research on my own. Now ironically, I still own the majority of the positions I started off with and those happen to all be dividend paying positions. It took me a few years to kind of adapt my own role of investing in what you know because the majority of long term successful companies in the stock market make products that people use all the time and have places that people visit all the time. For example, most of you guys wake up every morning before you go to work and you either order a care caramel latte on Starbucks and you walk inside with everybody else or you're waiting in a long drive through it doesn't matter how long it is, you're still going there. That alone gives you an idea of how popular Starbucks is and that's just one location out of the many locations in that city and in the state and in the country. So it'd be logical to anticipate that in the long term investing into a company like them for dividends and overall growth would be beneficial. And that's really important for people that are low income investors because every dollar that you're able to invest is very sacred to you. So you wanna make sure that you put it into something that can build you some long term profits. On top of that, investing what you have into what you know can make you more comfortable with that position when things get volatile and things get a little bit crazy in the stock market. No matter if you're investing a lot of money or a low amount of money, you have to really understand the fact that emotions do exist in the stock market. Simple example, when you realized that you wanted to start investing, I'm sure you were really excited to make your first investment. At the same time, you were probably really nervous to see how that position was going after the first hour, the first day, or the first week of putting that small amount of money or large amount of money into it. But even though emotions do exist in the stock market, you wanna do your best to keep emotions from having you make very rash decisions like buy buying more of a certain position or completely selling out because you're afraid the stock price is just gonna keep tanking. One very specific thing, especially when you're a low income investor that emotions could kick in, is buying into positions just because the share price is the same amount or lower than what you're investing. And that's just the philosophy and the psychology of feeling really good about buying whole shares of positions rather than fractional shares. And that makes sense, and personally, I can kind of agree to an extent, but especially when you look at analytics, whenever a share price endures a stock split, that company typically goes up by 25% in share price within the next 12 months in comparison to the rest of the S&P 500, which is almost 12%. And literally the purpose of a stock split is just to make the share price a little more feasible. Your market value doesn't change at all and it just means that the company is doing really well that their share price is going up but nothing else changes. So that's just something to keep in mind to keep you from only paying attention to low share prices and avoiding other types of metrics and things that you should be looking at. Understanding some of the analytics and the finances behind companies can really offset the lack of understanding you may have for that particular company at that time. For example, I'm not in real estate, but I can understand the benefit of a company like Realty Income having tenants based on essential based companies and how that can positively affect their free cash flow, therefore giving them the money to pay off dividends to their shareholders and constantly increasing them for almost 30 years. When it comes to the analytics of a position, you really wanna make sure that you're investing the small amount that you have into a company that has a long-term history of increasing their share price, but also increasing their passive income and consistently paying that passive income. And again, for low income investors, you can go back and connect this to the mindset of investing into a position just because it's the same amount or cheaper than what you're actually putting in every single week. Even an expensive position like William Sonoma, a position that may take you up to five weeks of investing $30 a week to get one full share can probably stretch your money out a lot further over a longer period of time than a lot of other companies that are a lot cheaper. Investing consistently with any amount, whether it's a lot of money or specifically a low income is really important because not only does every dollar that you have get more opportunity to grow over time, but you have more opportunity to 
lower your average cost or your yield of cost or whatever position you're holding into. At the same time, if you're investing in something that you know and appreciate and understand, that part really doesn't matter. But what does matter is understanding that every dollar that you invest consistently matters in the long run. The biggest mental hurdle when investing or wanting to invest with a low income is combating the idea that you don't have enough money to make a difference. And the biggest thing that you can do to combat that is to track your progress. One thing I personally do at the end of every month is track my passive income progress. How much am I making in dividends every single month? And between 2020 and 2024, I went from a portfolio that paid me under $80 for that entire year to a portfolio that has paid me almost three times as much within the first eight months. And that's with investing $25 to $30 a week. And that has helped me build a portfolio that as a low income investor, I'm very proud of. Even though I don't plan on being a low income investor for long, and hopefully you shouldn't either. But I do have a video that I'll put right here of how my portfolio did in August as far as dividends and overall growth, what stocks I bought, what stocks I sold, and what my plans are for this month. So hopefully you guys check out that video and I appreciate you guys watching this video. Until next time, as always, take care.